church say amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. One more time. Come on and bless the Lord with me on today for God is worthy of all of our praises. Oh, magnify the Lord with me for he is good. And we've come on this day to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen, amen, and amen. It is good to be able to be in the house of God one more time, but it's good to be alive, amen? Because we understand that, that, that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, then where would we be? But we are gracious today and we are grateful today because we understand that God didn't have to wake us up, but he woke us up anyhow. And that's a blessing in itself. I need you to do something with me, those of you that are, that are joining in via Facebook, via YouTube, however you're watching us on today, I need you just to take a moment and just give God a hand clap of praise right now for just being alive on this morning, for just being in your right mind this morning, to just being able to say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, amen. I'm going to give you about five seconds just to do that right now because I realize and I know that there's sometimes that we get so busy that we forget to thank God, so on this morning... I want us just to thank God just for a moment and say, Lord, I thank you for keeping us. Lord, I thank you for being with us. Lord, I thank you for just being the God that you are. Amen and amen. Amen, 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 amen. With that being said, with that being said, I ask you to go with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, we come right now with praise on our lips. Thanksgiving in our hearts because we realize, Father, that you are a great and just God. Father, you could have allowed us to sleep on into glory this morning, but somehow, some way, you saw that you still needed us for this, your kingdom. So you touched us with the finger of love, and yet you woke us up, Father. We might have had, we might have had minor aches and pains, Father, but yet we were still able to get up all by ourselves. Father, our eyes flew open and we saw that, that, that we were not looking at the roof of a coffin, but we were looking up knowing that you were still God and you were on the throne. Father, we thank you for that this morning because you've kept us down through the years. Father, you've blessed us. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And for that, we say thank you. Now, Father, now, Father, as we have a civil together as one body in Christ, Father, we come for just another precious privilege of this moment, Father, to be able to hear a word from on high. Father, we long to be in your house. We long to fellowship together. We long to love on each other, Father. But Father, right now, we have to do it from afar. But Father, I'm reminded of what you said in your word that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you shall be in the midst. So Father, right now, let our hearts Join, Father, that our spirits join across the ether waves, across the telephone lines, Father, across the internet, Father. Let them reach right now and let them connect so that we can hear from you. Give us what we need today, Father. Father, be with now this young man servant. Keep me behind yonder's cross. That they shall never see me, but see the God which resides in me. And I'll be so careful to give your name the praise. And Father, we thank you in advance and we all sit together. Amen. 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 Once again, it is good to be here. It is good to be in the presence of God one more time. To the few essential staff folk that are here, thank you so much for being here today, uh, for making this broadcast go the way it needs to go, and for doing the work that God has called us to do. That's important. That's important. Um, we are a church of the community and because we are a church of the community that means that though our physical doors may be closed, our spiritual doors remain open and I said that because I don't want you to think that telephones don't work, they do work if you have a need, call if you need something, you need prayer whatever it is, do not hesitate to call because for we realize that we are a church but we're in this community and that we're here to serve the people of God it doesn't matter about race, creed, or color. What it matters about is just knowing that God said that we are his church and we are his people. And if we are Christians, that means we ought to be Christ-like. Amen. So with that being said, I, I want to just put that invitation out there that if you need something, if you know someone in need, and in times like this, we all need something. It's not about being prideful. If we can help, we will do our very best to help. 
In this moment, in this hour, I want to um, lift up the Wilson family. Um, um, Pastor Wilson's lost his uh, father. We want to, to lift him up right now in prayer um, and be with his family right now and be with that church family right now. Um, that's the Spring Hill Baptist Church. Um, that's, that's, that's our sister church, amen. We're Springfield, they're Spring Hill, amen. And, and we do a lot to, together, haven't done a lot together due to the pandemic, but we want to just lift them up in prayer, lift up our, our cousins across the way, tell them that we care for them, that we're here for them. I spoke with Pastor Wilson, and, and I'll be speaking with him again, um, if not today, on tomorrow, um, just to lend the word of encouragement. So I ask that you would just be with us in prayer as we continue to lift up the Wilson family in this hour. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord on today. There is a word from the Lord on today. I actually would go with me to Matthew, the seventh chapter. Matthew, the seventh chapter. I want to start at the 24th verse. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. I want to just say this as well. Springfield Missionary Baptist Church. We don't build walls, we build bridges. Mm -hmm. Because bridges carry us over. Amen. 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 Our theme for this year has been creating an atmosphere of change. And in these first few series of sermons, in this first quarter, we're dealing with shifting, the shifting of God, the shifting of God in our life, the shifting of our lives. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to deal with the seventh chapter, this starting at this twenty-fourth verse through the twenty-seventh verse, and we're going to see what God has for us. Amen. It reads Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-four, reading from the New International Version, and it reads, "Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man." who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and it beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This will allow just for a few moments. I would like to preach from the subject, bring on the rain. Bring on the rain. Bring on the rain. It is... is an interesting concept that good advice will keep us out of a lot of trouble. That's, that's a novel concept. Something my grandfather taught me when I was knee high to a duck that great advice, good advice, wise advice will keep you out of a lot of trouble. Then he also taught me that a hard head huh, will make a soft body. Mm -hmm. and those words didn't mean a lot then, but as the years have rolled by, I don't mind saying as I've crept towards the magic number of 40, which will, it will be in a few weeks, mm -hmm. I must admit those words ring truer and truer as the years go by. That good advice, sound advice, wise advice, or as we would say in the house of God, wisdom will carry you longer than any other thing in your life aside from the love of Christ. That, that, that sound advice, when taken and put into practice, because let me say this, that we can get sound advice, but if we don't use it, then we still find ourselves in a whole 
lot of stuff. That 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 not only must we hear sound advice, not only must we be around sound advice, but we must put it into practice. Because it's in the putting it into practice and as in applying it to our life that, that we find that it will save us from a lot of headaches and heartaches. And the truth be told is that is that in this life we're gonna have headaches and heartaches. We're gonna have we're gonna have moments when we make mistakes, we're gonna have moments when we feel like it's over and done. We're gonna have moments when we have that are full of regrets. But the one thing that I can truly say to you, my brothers and sisters on today, that my good days have outweighed my bad days. Y'all not going to help me preach this on this morning. Uh, when the songwriter said that, uh, um, he was trying to say that, that when I look back over my life, I realize that, that I had more good days than I had bad days. And, and, and can we just... Can we just, for the sake of this sermon, can we just agree that, 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 that we had better days because, one, we listen to sound advice. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some, there are some, there are some that will argue and say, well, all of my days have been bad. All of my days have been doom and gloom. All of my days have been, have, have been in situations where it feels like that I was by myself. I didn't have nobody to give me advice. But can I just say, can I stop you right there? Can I say, this? if you've been living on this earth, if you've ever been around people, you've heard sound advice. Now, you may not have applied it, but you heard it. All right. As we raise and rear children, we try to give them sound advice. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't always take it because they want to do it their way. Mm -hmm. But 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 in the midst of that, we love them anyhow, and we never stop giving them advice because we realize that we're trying to save them mm -hmm. and not hurt or harm them. How does this fit into the shifting? How does this fit into the moving of, 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 of life and, and moving us into a better atmosphere? Well, it's very simple that, that we have got to become mature enough to understand that we have to put aside the milk and the other stuff and pick up a fork and eat some real food. In other words, we got to live and train our minds to be different in our thinking because when we're different in our thinking, then we then we will see that life will become much easier. There's a there's a there's a story that goes along with this text. The story goes like this: said so there were two men who both brought property in the same neighborhood. One, he went down, to me, they both went down to the hardware store. They ordered the lumber. I'm going to help you right now. Huh? Got the nails, got the cement, got all the materials needed to build their house in this neighborhood. They got back to their respective lots that were across the street from one another and and one man, he begins to dig in the ground. He dug and he dug and he dug and he kept on digging and he dug for weeks at a time. The other day we across the street, he went over and he surveyed his land and he, he looked at it and he began immediately uh, to put up beams and to lay down the cement for the foundation and begin to block off where the space where the house was going to be. But the man across the street just kept on digging and he kept on digging. And about after about two or three weeks, uh, one man's house, the man across the street's house, was already built, and he was the, the moving truck was backing in, and they were moving furniture in. But the the first man across the street was still digging. Mm -hmm. He was digging, and, and he kept on digging. And his wife got so embarrassed, and she said, "She said, babe, why did you keep on digging? Uh, they've already put up." their house. They're already moving in their house. They're about to have a housewoman in. And just as she was talking, the husband was digging and digging and digging. And all of a sudden, he hit something solid. Said, babe, don't worry about it. I won't dig no more. I found what I'm looking for. He then goes and he drives beams into the ground. He then he he, he then he, he then he then puts his foundation on it. After he does all of that, he then builds up. He builds his house. So months went by. A year went by. 
Both houses beautiful, made to specs. But then a hurricane came. Lord have mercy. And in the midst of the hurricane, the winds blew. They beat on both of the houses. As they beat on both of the houses, one house, it creaked. It strained under the wind, but it still didn't go anywhere. The other house that had a foundation that wasn't sturdy enough, the wind blew, the rains came, the flood came, and all of a sudden, a crash. The house had fallen. So the neighbor went and looked and he said, babe, the house is going down the street. The flood has taken it. And she said, well, well how come our house didn't crash? She said, because I found a solid foundation that I knew I had to get to the solid foundation before I began to build because a house can be nice, a house can be put together, but if it doesn't have a solid foundation, it's doomed to fail. What am I talking about? Well, I'm glad you asked. And, and, and here it is simply that, that if your life and I, our lives are not on a solid foundation, if we have not rooted ourselves in the word of God, if we have not listened to the teachings of God, that, that we will find out when the rains come, when the winds come, that if we are not rooted, we will surely drift away. There's an old song that said there's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Then the song said, drift away, Lord. Drift away. You will surely drift away. And what I'm trying to tell you is that you've got to get to the point in your life that you don't fear when the rain comes, that you don't fear when the wind comes because you know what you're made of. And if you're made of the right stuff, if you have the right material, if you're rooted in the right foundation, the rain can come, the winds can come, but you know for a fact you ain't going nowhere. I wish I, I wish I had some people here. I tell you to high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I need you to be sure that you're rooted in the word. I need you to be sure that your foundation is secure. You see, Jesus in this text, he, he uses this parable to teach them. But now, it's interesting in this text because in this text, he deals with a whole lot in this seventh chapter of Matthew. First, he talks about judging others. He says, do not judge or you too will be judged. That's, that's what he starts out with in the seventh chapter of Matthew. Right? And that's interesting because if you're going to have a foundation, now, you can't be worried now, about what other folk are doing. Lord have mercy. I, I, I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, our biggest downfall is not that we doubt God, but our biggest downfall is that we don't stay focused on him long enough um, to hear what he's trying to tell us because we're too busy trying to impress others. And then have the egregious gall to judge them when they don't fit in our box of what we think they should be. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get us to a next level. I'm trying to get you to shift. But not only, not only, not only does he talk about judging others, uh, but then he says we need to ask, seek, and then knock. In other words, uh, what he's saying is that, is that if, if you can get past judging for God, you've got to learn how to ask for what you need. That's right here in, 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 in this text, uh, in this seventh chapter. It's interesting. First, he talks about, hey, I, I need you to worry about yourself first. Uh, I don't need you to worry about nobody else. Worry about yourself. Uh, that if you're going to get to the next level, if you're going to shift, if you're going to create an atmosphere of change, you've got to first worry about yourself. But then you've got to learn how to ask. Uh, and you've got to learn how to how to get to God. You've got to learn that whatever you ask for God, uh, if it's in his will, you're going to get it. And somebody needs to hear this huh? because you've been asking for stuff. Huh? But I hear God saying, I can bless you with that. I would bless you with that. But you ain't mature enough to handle that yet. And you need to understand that you don't stop knocking because I don't answer. Huh? You keep on knocking huh? until the door opens up. Not only, not only does we need to know how to ask or tell us to, to stay in our own lane, but then he talks about the narrow and wide gate. He lets us know that, that if we don't stay focused in him and on him, 
that we might miss him. And, and, and that's important, that's important, that's important. Because, because if we get into the next level, then can, can, I, can, I, can I just stop for a minute? Can I just say this? A whole lot of church folk go miss heaven and go straight to hell. Because they don't know how to live for Christ. He says, the, the gate that you enter through is narrow. For, for, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that, that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But, but small is the gate and narrow is the one that leads out. And if you find other words out, what he's saying is that, 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 that just coming to church don't mean you're going to heaven. I, I, I'm trying to help somebody here. I, I, I just tuning on Bible study don't mean you're going to heaven. I, just putting a few coins in the plate don't mean you're going to heaven. I, you've got to have relationship and you've got to find him where he is. But then he started talking about truth and false prophets. I laughed at that because I said, Lord, uh, you're summing up our whole last year <laughs> in one particular book. Y'all didn't help me here. Um, um, if we want to take a rewind of 2020, I know, that, I know we don't want to do that, but, but we got this, y'all just, just have a reference point that all of 2020 is in chapter 7 of Matthew. <laughs> um, you know, we you know, we had that judging problem where one group, <laughs> Lord have mercy, uh, was better than another group mm -hmm. because of the color of their skin mm -hmm. and because of their political party. Come on, y'all might say amen, I don't get no, no, no better. Then, 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 then we had folk that, then we had a situation where, where all the hell that we had going on, we still were missing how to talk to God and asking him to open some doors, but, but some of us got it and we realized that that no matter what's going on, that we still gonna ask, seek, and knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and then we saw in the waiting moments of 2020, the early moments of 2021, that 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 just because God have mercy, God, just because you call on Christ's name, don't mean you're going to heaven because your actions speak louder than your words. I, I'm, I'm trying to help you here. Then on top of that, then then 2020 exposed some. True and false prophets. Can, 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 can I just get on my box for just a hot second? I promise you I won't be here long and I'm going to move home. Now, 2020, 2020 did two things. It showed us who, who the real people of God were and who the talkers were. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Um, um, real, the real people of God. Now, they, they, they were able to still serve God, still trust God, even when they couldn't get to the house of God. Now, the folk that were false uh, fell apart. The folk that were false said stuff like, "Well, we going to church anyhow uh, because uh, because uh, because um, because of God can still heal us." Uh, and then yet you had churches full of folk that were dying of a virus because they wouldn't want to shut their doors out uh, because they want. Can, can, uh, God, I'm gonna say it anyhow. I might as well lie because they wanted to be sure that their pockets stayed lined. Y'all can help me right now. I might as well say Amen. Uh, that they didn't want. That they didn't want to let it go. But you got to understand that. trying to help us here. That folk will stay home from church because it's cloudy and rainy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Like they don't make hats. Like they don't make raincoats. Like they don't make galoshes. Like they don't, God have mercy. Like they don't make um, um, rain jackets. 
that if your relationship is dependent on the weather, then you have what we call a fair weather relationship. Mm -hmm. That means that your relationship is based off of what's going on with the weather, something you can't control. I, I, but, 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 but you and I have learned, I, a lot of us have learned that I don't care if it's raining, I don't care if it's snowing, I don't care if it's safe to get on the road. I'm coming down to the church. I, I'm coming and getting his presence. And now with the advent of all that we have going on, we realize now we can worship him right where we are, but it doesn't change our relationship. If you ever want to get to the next level, we've got to have a firm foundation and we have to be like the wise builder. The wise builder, he, 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 he dug and he built his house on a firm foundation. Now, it's interesting because this text teaches two things. One, it teaches this. The first thing that it teaches is this, is that, that when we are encountering to build, we have to find truth before we ever start establishing anything. Mm -hmm. um, when I say truth, you have to find the truth in the matter, the truth in the relationship, the truth of God. In other words, uh, you've got to spend time with him personally. Mm -hmm. Corporate is one thing, but in order for you to have a relationship, in order for us to be able to not be afraid of the rain, we've got to have a private relationship with him. A lot of us have pure relationships, but we don't have private relationships. And when we don't have a private relationship, because here's the thing, if I can praise him in private, I have no problem with praising him in public. But if I can only praise him in public, and I can never talk to him in private, it means that I relegate God to a public setting. So when the public setting is closed, then how then am I able I, to have a relationship with him? Second thing that takes Jesus is that if we're going to bring on the rain, mm -hmm. we have to assure ourselves that what the material that we're using can stand up to the weather. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm not a builder, but I've been a part of a few building projects, and, 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 and one thing I know is that there are different kinds of material. There's <laughs> different kinds of wood to you. Some are better and some are, are, are worse. Some, I'm not going to say any are worse, but they just don't, may not fit your needs that, that if you're building a structure, then you want the best materials possible at the best price possible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have all seen situations where someone has cut corners uh, and they have built a built a building or built something with, with not good material. And what has happened after time, it wears out and it fails. But but I think I need to say this, that, that any material that is man-made, it already has a shelf life. That, that in other words, uh, that, that it's going to rot, it's going to have issues with it, it's going it's to it's it's require maintenance. But not only that, my brothers and sisters, but when God gives us his materials, it lasts forever. What am I trying to tell you is that, is that we've got to be sure that our materials that we use in our life uh, are not the words that we get always from others, uh, but they're the words that we get from God. That goes back to what I said in the beginning about, about uh, wisdom and about good advice. Uh, that, that I don't need anyone to give me advice about, to me about something that they ain't never been through. Uh -huh. If you never Ridden a bicycle, I don't need you to give me advice on how to ride a bicycle. Mm -hmm. If you've never driven a car, y'all are going to help me right now. I, I don't need you to give me driving lessons. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I, I, there, there was a movie back in the day with Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor called Hear No Evil, See No Evil. It's a, it's a very old movie. Y'all, one was blind and one was deaf. But they were best friends and they, were, they witnessed a murder. And, and one could hear and one could see, and the other couldn't see, and the other one couldn't hear. And so here they were trying to navigate themselves through this murder mystery with not having all the, all the skills they needed uh, to get it done. And so as you see, if you ever see the movie, a lot of crazy stuff happened to them. A lot of near-death experiences, that's not a way I want to live. But they were taking advice 
from the one that had the faculty that the other one didn't have. And so, because one couldn't hear right, what he could see, he would turn to him and speak to him, and he would tell him exactly what he heard. Right? The one that couldn't see, right, uh, G. Wilder then would tell Richard Pryor, and he would whisper in his ear and tell him, um, and he would, me, he would, he would whisper in his ear and tell him what the person said. Right? In other words, right, what I'm saying is that I need to take advice from somebody right, who's already been through something, right, has already dealt with something, right, and I can only trust God because God knows it all. Right? And the woman and daddy gave me good advice uh, that I need to have godly advice in my life and godly guidance in my life because when I have godly guidance in my life it will keep me out of a lot of calamity and trouble but not only that it takes a lot of some teachers that it's important to apply good advice mm -hmm. if the foolish builder had applied the advice that he needed uh, in order God had mercy uh, to build his house his house would have never failed. Uh, but we've got to understand that the winds are going to come, the rains are going to come, and things are going to happen in our life, and we can't avoid that. And that's why we must have a sure footing on the foundation that we need. Why do we need to bring on the water? Mm -hmm. Lastly, as I go to my seat, I can bring on the rain because I realize that rain can do damage, but rain also can do some good. As destructive as water can be, as destructive as rain can be, and a lot of rain can be, but rain also washes things away. And if I'm got a front, if I've got a sure foundation, if I've got a foundation that God has established upon the principles of God. Mm -hmm. The rain doesn't scare me because I realize that the rain is coming only to wash away the things that I really don't need. Mm -hmm. I wish I had about three or four of you in here today. I, and I'll make five and I'll testify and say, Lord, I thank you for the rain that's fallen in my life. Because I realize and we realize and we know that no matter what has happened, that each time the rain comes, I, that's God's way of cleansing the situation that I'm in. That he washes away all the things that I don't need. And when he washes those things away, I, he preserves me because I know I, where my footing is. I, the Bible would tell us I, that at the end of the day that the rains come I, and the floods come, but the Lord shall build up a standard I, and we'll be able to stand against the flood and the rains. Uh, well, there was a story that I'm going to leave you with uh, about a lady one night. Uh, there was a lady one night, she left revival. And as she began to go home, uh, she stopped at a stop sign. Uh, a man jumped in her car. Uh, he, then, uh, he then took her and tied her up with duct tape. Uh, uh, he duct taped her mouth. Uh, he duct taped her hands. Uh, he duct taped her feet. Uh, and he took off in her car. Uh, and he was going to kill her, huh? but the rain began to come down. Huh? And he said, I, I got to get out of here huh? unless I get caught. Huh? So he took this woman and he threw her in the ditch. Huh? And the ditch began huh, to fill up with water, y'all. Huh? The rain kept falling. Huh? The water in the ditch got higher and higher. Huh? The woman thought she was going to die. Huh? She tried to work her hands loose. Huh? And she couldn't work her hands loose. Huh? She tried to work her feet. Huh? But her feet were tied tight. Huh? The rain kept coming down, y'all. Huh? The water kept getting higher. Huh? And just before uh, the water covered her completely, uh, she's laying in that ditch. Uh, she began to work her hands. Uh, and the water uh, began uh, to wash away the glue uh, that was on the duct tape. Y'all, it help me right now. Uh, and the more she worked, uh, the more the water uh, began to uh, wash away the glue. Uh, I'm trying to help somebody here. Uh, after a while, she got her hands free. Uh, then she got her mouth free, uh, she got her legs free, uh, and she stood up uh, and she said, Lord, uh, I thank God for the rain. Uh, do I got anybody in here uh, that you can say uh, you survived uh, because of the rain, uh, that you knew uh, that God said, uh, I'll always be with you, uh, that even uh, when it seems like uh, the waters are going to cover up your head, uh, when it seems like uh, the flood may overtake you, uh, I hear God. I told you I'd be with you till the end of time. And the water came 
But then the water huh, that was designed to kill you, huh, it's the same water huh, that saved you. Huh. Come here, Springfield. Huh. Let me see if I can bring it home to you. Huh. And can I tell you huh, that one day huh, you got in some water also, huh, and it washed up huh, all of your sins away. Huh. Oh, God. Huh. Oh, God. I feel like preaching just a little while longer here. Huh. Can I have about five little minutes? Huh, and can I tell you this? Huh, that we know huh, that when we step in the water, huh, in that baptismal pool, huh, that the water huh, ain't got no saving properties. Huh. It's just plain old tap water. Huh. But we also know huh, that supernaturally, huh, it got all the powers. Huh, because when we go in, huh, and then when we come back up, huh, that God has washed up huh, all of our sins away. Huh. Do I, can I get about three or four of you out there huh, that don't mind waving your hands huh, and saying, Lord, huh, I thank God huh, for the rain. Huh. Rain, huh, come on down. Huh. Rain, huh, rain down on me. Huh, because, Lord, when you rain, huh, you're just sending me huh, brand new blessings. Huh, that, Lord, when it rains, huh, you're sending me huh, brand new mercies. Huh, to rain. Huh? Oh, y'all don't know the story. Huh? It rained one Friday huh? out on Calvary. Huh? The Bible would tell us huh? in St. Luke huh? that the clouds got dark. Huh? That thunder began to roll. Y'all can help me right now. Huh? That the moon huh? went down in blood. Huh? The stars huh? leaped over the banisters of heaven. Huh? And then the rain huh? began to fall down huh? at the very moment huh? that Jesus said, huh? it is finished, y'all. Huh? The came down huh, and it seemed like uh, the rain uh, had washed away all of our hopes uh, but one thing about rain uh, that when the rain goes away uh, that the sun uh, will shine again uh, oh I think you miss me uh, that when the rain uh, goes away uh, the sun uh, will shine again uh, and the sun uh, is still shining uh, so Lord uh, I thank you uh, for the rain uh, I thank you uh, for washing things perceive things. That when bad weather comes, my family tell you, I get fascinated by it. I, I go look out the window. When I was a little boy, when bad, when bad weather would come, my grandfather and I, we would go sit either on the porch or in the little sun porch and had a big glass and we would look out. We'd see the storm coming across the field. And we would just sit there and just look, wouldn't say a word. Just be fascinated by the rain, by the thunder, by the lightning. Now my grandmother's a little different. She would tell me to go sit down because God is at work. But my grandfather, he would just sit there home in his lap. We would just look at the storm come. To this day, I, when storms come, I don't know if you know, but I, I can smell it in the oh, oh, a storm's coming, rain's coming. And I can see it coming across and I say it's on its way. Because I realized that Rain comes to purify. As destructive as it can be, 
it comes to purify. It comes to cleanse. And so if I always think it can be damaging, then I'll be afraid of it. I'll try to shy away from my storms. But in order to get to the next level, you got to start going through some storms. Lash and lashes as I go to my seat. There's a young lady learning how to drive. And she had problems with driving in weather. She started out driving one day, she was caught with her father, going in the room. Storm cloud came. She said, Dad, do you want me to get over? She he said, no, keep on driving. But Dad, it's about to rain. Keep on driving. Put your flashes on, turn your windshield wipers, keep on driving. But Dad, I'm nervous, baby, keep on driving. But the trucks are going to keep on driving. Well, we can pull it in the bridge and we can stop. Keep on driving. I'm trying to help somebody here. She made every excuse she could to get out of that seat, not to drive the next storm. But her father said, keep on driving. Shortly after she got in the storm, she looked above and saw that the storm had, was breaking and the sun was coming through. She loved her dad and said, Dad, I thank you. I never would have trusted myself unless you pushed me. He said, baby, remember this, that every storm has a beginning and it has an end. And the quicker you drive through it, the quicker you get to the end. That's what I'm going to leave you with on today. Here's some sound advice. Don't be afraid of, your, of the rain. Don't be afraid of your storms. Drive through them. Survive them. Because when you become a storm survivor, then you can start advising other folk on how to get through their storms. I wish I wish that church where I, I, I would I'll take the raise your hand all the storm survivors. Because folk can tell you when you got a a storm of cancer, you can't avoid that. You gotta drive through it. And here's the thing. If I'm driving through it and I don't make it, that's God's will. Mm -hmm. But I'll never know it until I try. God bless you as much as my prayer. Mm -hmm. Join us on Tuesday for our um, prayer at 6 p.m. Um, Bible study. We will tell this again. <laughs> Wednesday at 7, and I think I need to just say this about Bible study. Last week, not sure really what happened, um, was on it, and at my house, the internet just could not handle the load of what was going on, and, and crashed, or whatever you want to call it, um, have since gone and added some more stuff to it. Hopefully, that it, this, it, it will work. Um, so join us again on, on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. for our Bible study. We we'll pick up where we left off last week, okay? Amen. It was about to get good, and the camera goes boop. But that's technology. That's 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 technology. Um, so I ask you just 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 charge it to to the to the technology, and not to to myself. I was online looking crazy, like what what has just happened? But that's technology. I have no control over that. But it also makes me know that the devil didn't want us to hear what what, what needed to be said. But don't worry. This week we will resume. Please join us. Please join us and be with us. God bless you is our prayer. We thank you and we bless you. Amen, amen, and amen.